Hey, what's up everybody? I'm through YouTube land, Elric Ferris, Editor-in-Chief here at the Motherboards.org YouTube channel. Well, check it out. Today we're going to go over a few different things about cooling, what it can do for you, and what happens with the ambient temperature of a room. So let's start out with air cooling. Most CPUs that you buy, usually these days if they're not an OEM CPU, come with a fan. Believe it or not, that fan is probably good enough to cool your CPU. The thing is, is that if you're in a room that has an ambient temperature of 90 degrees, your CPU is probably going to be at least 20 degrees higher than that since it's fighting the temperature of the CPU to keep cool. So let's just start right there. Ambient temperature is the actual temperature of the room and the environment that you're working in. With air cooling, you can never get to ambient temperature. It's always going to be hotter than ambient temperature using air cooling. Now, if you're using liquid cooling, you have a better chance using liquid cooling of achieving a temperature of around ambient. It still won't be ambient, it'll be slightly above, but it will be closer to ambient temperatures. I think that for the general user who overclocks and wants to have their system running good, I would strongly suggest using a liquid cooling system. Now, they also have Peltier cooling. Peltier device is a device that on one side it's very cool, one side it's really hot. The hot side is usually cooled by liquid. The only problem with this is that today's temperatures of the CPUs actually get so hot that the Peltier cannot handle it and it ends up creating condensation in your system which actually will actually blow your system up when the liquid hits the parts. So that's really become an outdated thing. Now, the new phase change and all these new things that have come out where there you know, these liquid nitrogen and all this stuff, yeah, that stuff where you can definitely get your CPU down below ambient temperature. But is the average user gonna do this? No, they're not because it's like quite insane to even do. One mistake, one false move, you can burn your finger off, set your house on fire, God only knows the amplifications of, you know, the implications rather of doing this stuff. So basically it's like this. If you're an overclocker, you should probably not be looking at using air temperature unless you're going to be using your house air conditioner. So if you turn your air conditioner house down to, you know, 30 degrees or 40 degrees and keep your house like an ice cube, well then yeah, sure, you might be able to get a little bit closer to ambient. It's still going to be hotter using the air cooling, but you'll get better results. With liquid cooling, the actual cooler that you keep the house, this works better. Because even though the liquid cooling device, the CPU will emanate some heat, it actually goes more into your room and outside of the case than through the liquid cooling itself. The liquid cooling will stay closer to ambient in a very cold, cold room. So the Peltier, same thing. It'll work better in a low room, but if your CPU is a very powerful CPU, over and over again, the Peltier is going to fail and create condensation. So basically, this is a pretty quick review. I just wanted to let you people know that's going out there. Ambient temperature is the temperature of the room that you're working in. Air cooling can never get to ambient temperature. It's always running much hotter. Liquid, you can get closer to an ambient temperature. Not the exact ambient, but closer. With a Peltier, you may be able to get to that, but if your CPU runs really hot, you're gonna get condensation inside the system and fry it out. So really, the only way to truly beat ambient is by using the liquid nitrogen, phase change, and those type of cooling units. And those are not for the meek of heart. So for all you guys out there who are searching for around for all these you know, great heat sinks, there are some people who make great looking heat sinks that work like crap. And there are some people who make crappy looking heat sinks that work really well. My personal favorites out there is if I'm going to go out and custom build a system, I would probably go out and get me a Swift Tech water block and then custom par custom excuse me, custom build all my parts around that. So I hope you like this video. Just explains a little bit of ambient temperatures and the type of cooling and what it can do for you. Thanks for watching our channel. I look forward to your comments.